Hello everyone and welcome to the channel, I'm Emmanuel, I'm an Airbus pilot and welcome to MK Studios brand new Zurich scenery in the Phoenix A320 with sharklets on a flight from Zurich to Huagada, which is going to be a roughly 4 hour flight. I'm really looking forward to exploring the new Zurich airport as we set up our Airbus for our way over to Egypt for a nice winter holidays in 21 to 25 degrees. So join me in the cockpit as we're about to set up our A320 on our flight over to Egypt. Now there is no GSX profile at the time I'm recording this one, so we'll have to live with the default GSX profile which does misplace the guidance system and the tow truck, so don't bother with that. The rest of it though is looking really really good as we are used to from MK Studios and their recent releases. Now, let's go ahead and set our aircraft up. Safety inspection is already complete. I am going to do this one in the same kind of flow that we would use in the real world, so... Not going to explain every single one uh, button I push over here. Now let's go ahead and import our flight plan from Simbrief and start by having a look at the forecast weather that we can find down here. And as we can see, Hurgada, very good weather conditions both forecast and existing at the same goes for our destination alternate Cairo. So overall very good weather conditions all over. And with that we can make a decision on the amount of fuel to use and I tend to say I'm happy to go with minimum here. So that's going to be 13.7 plus 200 for taxi. Let's round that up 14 tons of fuel for our flight over to Wagada. So let's go over into the mass and balance and onto the plant fuel and we are going to go with 14 thousand kilos down here. Now you may notice that the flight is currently overweight with these weights. So what are we gonna have to do? Well we're gonna reduce that plant zero fuel weight down here. So I'd say we are gonna go down to 61 tons which is the maximum for the Phoenix and for that we need 3500 kilos of cargo so we'll have to leave 1500 kilos behind. Now the gross weight is also rather high at the moment, but let's just go ahead, hit apply and load, and I am going to do this one um, through the GSX for boarding and refueling, and we might just have a quick look over here into our flight plan to see max takeoff weight 78 tons. So I'm not too worried about that Phoenix warning saying that 75 is over the limit. We are well within the limit. Nonetheless. We'll have to leave 1,500 kilos behind because, well, well, we'll have to live with it. Nothing we can do about this, guys. In any case, GSX is going to start the uh, loading and the refueling in a few moments so we can make use of that time, run the APU fire test to ensure that the APU is safe to start up, which it is, and then we can go ahead and start the APU as it is rather cold outside on this December morning. Alright, IRS is all three into NAV and them. Let's verify that our aircraft is safe for service by going over into first of all the takeoff calculation. So Zurich, Romney 28, we can synchronize all the data. We are not going to plan an intersection today, so let's hit calculate. Flaps 1 takeoff at 49 degrees. Well, I tend to say we are... Um, Heavy enough that we are going to go for config 2 over here. Let's type that in. And, well, config 2 should give us a much better tail clearance. Let's go for that. Okay. So. So far, so good. Then let's go down to the door page. We do have sufficient oxygen on board. We have sufficient hydraulic quantity on board. And we do have the engine oil as well. Wonderful. So that's our initial... Checks completed, the flaps and the um, spoilers are up, wonderful. So park and brake release, test the brakes, looking good, and park and brake is set again. Alright, wonderful. So with all of that out of the way, the APU is available, let's turn the bleed on, and then we can start with our cockpit preparation. Refueling is still to go, so I am going to... Ignore that for the time being. Now over onto the ELEC page. Our batteries are charging 
perfectly fine, wonderful. Fuel pumps remain off as we are still refueling the aircraft. Engine fire test number one looking good. Engine fire test number two looking good. Everything down here is okay. Right, moving on to our main panel and over here. Let's see, QNH 1027. So we are gonna go with that. And that's set. Using VHF 1 and 2 today, 1228, 1215. Just about perfect. Ground clutter suppression auto, gain auto. And the rest is looking good down here. The same over here. So let's get right into the FMS. Okay, A32200 CFM56 engines. That is good already. Onto the init page where we're gonna do the init request and at the same time let's go to the ATSU, AOC menu, flight init and data request. Okay, so far so good and the flight plan is here. Then Edelweiss 130 Juliet, cost index 10. Cruise level 350. Onto the flight plan page, Zurich, departure, runway 28. And we'll have the Degas 3 Whiskey today. Insert and for the arrival into Hurghada. The ILS is out of service today, so we are going to fly the Arnav approach, runway 34 right. Beaupot 1 Alpha arrival and let's uh, quickly see about our transition. I am going to use my. I am going to use my Lido charts today, just because I do happen to like them. So, charts, 3-4 right, and then we can pin the Arnav stars, we can pin the RMP approach onto runway 3-4 right, and we can already start to pin the airport chart and the parking chart. Now let's go ahead and find the same thing for Zurich real quick. So, Zurich, runways. Or rather departures off 28 and we are looking for the Degas 3 whiskey should be that one I think nope it's not this is so much easier in the real world okay um well Arnav 1 sits I guess or Arnav 5 sits let's see let's see the 5 one first Degas 3 whiskey here it is so it's the Arnav Five sits that we are gonna pin together with the airport charts, so AGC and APC. Wonderful. So let's do a quick check over here for our arrival into Hurghada. And we end up at Golf November 203, which we can't pin directly, so let's go ahead and have a look at the RMP approach and see what kind of options we have over here. And it offers Golf November 202 and then 203. So let's take the 202 transition and it should sequence itself automatically. So very quick check down here. Indeed, on the star towards 203. So it just sequenced the 202 out of it. Excellent. Alright, so back to checking our SID. Here we have it. So, Degas 3 Whiskey Departure, straight at 2.3 dB Kilo Lima Oscar, then Radial 252, inbound waypoint 552, which is an overfly waypoint. And thereafter, let's zoom that out a bit, Degas is over here, so we'll continue left, back towards Cloton VOR, and then via Momul, Kolul, and then waypoints 504, 525, and Degas. Initial climb is going to be on a separate chart, which we don't have access to in uh, the sim at the moment, which is rather unfortunate, but that shall not matter too much. Let's get rid of that for the time being. Alright, the engine out sit is going to remain the same as our standard sit, so I'm not going to insert too much stuff over here. Zurich 28 onto here, and then a quick check. 273 is our initial track. So let's draw a 273 radial onto the extended center line. Alright then, init page. Let's give this a go. 
So, 0 fuel weight, 62.2, which is gonna be overweight, but that shall not matter too much. We are going to receive updated data once the load sheet arrives. 14 tons, and for our fuel, Zero point four, two point one, one point two. So two point one is in there and one point two going into here. Then let's go ahead and do the wind data request. <coughs> and while we're waiting for that we can start to type in our takeoff data. <coughs> so flaps to forty nine degrees. Two forty nine and the takeoff speeds one three six, one three seven, one four one. Like that. So last but not least, Zurich is based on a noise abatement procedure number one. So for the acceleration we'll take four thousand four hundred and sixteen. Respectively four four twenty. Here we go, and that's our initial FMS setup completed. 228 knots clean speed, so we are going to be rather quick. And in case of an immediate return, I am going to say select 0 to 8 into here. Optimum 340, cruising 350, maximum 371 is looking good. Extra fuel, well, it's showing negative for the time being, but I don't really trust it, so... We'll just leave it at that for the time being. In the meantime, we do have a load sheet over here, which we can kind of ignore. Then we have a second preliminary load sheet, 62.2 still. And over here we have the maximum at 61. Now, for the max takeoff weight, 73.5, that's really, really limited. And most holiday A320 configs you will find will have the 78 from Simbrief. So I am going to ignore this for now. I'll just press accept and see what it throws out at the end. Enough accuracy upgraded, GPS primary. Wonderful, so the alignment is complete. Well then, 5000 initial, QNH 1027, let's put that in. Here we go. Constraints, 10 miles. And that's that. So, ground flatic, mind your ears, oxygen test. That's looking good, and same thing on the other end side. Okay, wonderful. So that stuff is done. We're waiting for the refueling to be completed. And in the meantime, I'd say we can already say hello to our passengers. Liebe Gäste, einen schönen guten Morgen aus dem Cockpit. Hier spricht Ihr Kapitän. Mein Name ist der Manuel im Namen der Edelwies. Darf ich sehr herzlich an Bord unseres Fluges nach Holgada willkommen heißen. Flugzeit heute etwa 3 Stunden und 45 Minuten in einer Höhe von etwa 10.000 und 600 Metern. Wir bedanken uns, dass wir unsere Gäste sind. Lehnen Sie sich zurück und genießen den Flug mit uns. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning from Flutic. This is your captain speaking. My name is Emanuel in the name of Edelwies. Welcome aboard Flight 130 to Holgada. Today's flight time is going to be approximately 3 hours and 45 minutes at a cruising altitude of 10,600 meters. We'd like to thank you for being our guests today, sit back, relax and enjoy the flight with us. And last but not least, we are just now finishing up the latest paperwork and completing the refueling of the aircraft. Once everything is done, we will start our pushback and our way towards Egypt. Thank you very much for your attention and again, welcome aboard. Okay, so the passengers are already informed, then let's go ahead to with the departure briefing, please. Okay, thank you very much. So, for the briefing... Zurich, runway 28, Degas 3, Whiskey Departure, initial climb 5000, MSA-wise... We are looking at uh, 5700 to 4500 on the departure sectors within 15 miles. Um, extra fuel and time is roughly zero. 
Okay, thank you. Hotspots for the taxi. I don't see any stop margin and reject the takeoff will be sufficient. Engine outset, we follow the standard instrument departure and if we need to come back we can do that via an ILS approach to runway 28 or basically any other runway available. Um, we are above the maximum landing weight, so if we have to make an immediate return, uh, then we will read the overweight landing checklist, if time permits. I don't see any special non-standard operations, do you? No? Okay, so threats for the departure, we have the terrain. And, yeah, dealing with that, I would like to draw this 17-mile ring around the airport on that fixed page because of the MSA, so let's insert 1700 down here, oh, sorry, uh, one, sorry, uh, 17, so that we've got an MSA of 5700 in that area and the 9200 behind that. Okay, um, how are we going to mitigate against that? Well, we will be using our train display in order to verify that we are not going into anything. And last thing, maybe, radial, we can draw 220 down here. So that we know where this line down here goes. So 4,500 in any of this sector towards Vilsau over here keeps us safe. Any questions? No? Beautiful. So the refueling is about to be completed. And refueling is done just now. The tank vorgang is beendet, the refueling is complete. Okay, beautiful, so that's done. They are still loading the cargo by the looks of it. Let's have a quick look outside on the right hand side to see what's going on. So, open up that window please. Yeah, still doing the completing the refueling and then cargo operations will have to see what's uh, going on there. Okay. So, cockpit preparation checklist please. Gear pins and covers removed. Fuel quantity. 14,000 kilograms balanced. Seatbelts on. ADRs. NAV and the Baho Ref QNH 1027. Cockpit preparation checklist complete. Okay, so let's go to the outside here real quick and check what's going on with our cargo loading. The doors are open and the holds are empty. That's not a good combination. That's definitely not a good combination there. Okay, well, let's go ahead and check the Phoenix app to see what's going on. And indeed, they have just loaded it all. Okay. So they seem to have slightly overdone it here. So looking into this, the actual CG is far too much to the front. The 73.5 over here is the maximum that the uh, Phoenix can take. The only thing I'm wondering about is how it can put the uh, zero fuel weight CG over there. Or rather the uh, gross weight CG. And not just distribute the cargo correctly then. That's kind of what I would have expected. So if the CG was over here, then we would be in the safe range. So 31. That means we'll probably have to reseat some passengers from the front to the back. And only when that is done we can actually go ahead and... Um, and dispatch. So let's just go down here into the config screen. Passengers and cargo. So... Now the big question is, CG, can we edit this? Let's say 32. No, we can't. 
Okay, well that is somewhat of a pity. In that case, we'll have to reduce the cargo loading down here. I said reduce the cargo loading. No? <sighs> okay. Well, in that case, let's hit reset and do this ourselves. So, passengers, we've got 168, cargo 3.5, and now the CG is okay. So what happens if I just change this back? Well, okay, now we don't have the fuel, so let's first of all go ahead and fuel the aircraft. So, 14,000. Here we go. So that's 28.4. So now we are within the limits. Now let's see what's going to happen if I increase my load a little bit. So let's go back into here. Cargo 5000. Then it doesn't even do it. Okay. Well that's kind of fine. We are going to keep the, uh, the numbers we have there right now. As you can see, that is within the safe operating limits of the aircraft. Okay, I am just going to keep that. So, with that data, we're now at a gross weight of 75 tons and the CG is 28.4. So let's go into here, gross weight 75 and 28.4. The rest of the data can remain. Calculate. So, flaps 2, down trim 0, and 48 degrees. Well, first things first, let's go over here into the fuel prediction. I do not think that we have an accurate load sheet after all these edits here. And while we're at it, let's get GSX to start working. Okay, let's see if we do have an accurate load sheet. No, we don't. Okay, that's fine. Then we are gonna do it over here. So, config fuel. Okay, let's see. Um, 61 tons, zero fuel weight, which is the maximum, and the CG 28.4. Now, the only question is... Zero fuel CG, 32.2. That looks better. Alright, 14 tons is 74.8. Uh, and the fuel is okay the way it is for the time being. Since there's a lot of rounding going on in here. And we should have 2.1 for the alternate, I believe. Okay, we're gonna stick with that for the time being. Then, take off. Flaps 2 and... Zero trim. 48 degrees. And the takeoff data. It's gonna be 136, 137, 141. So, 36, 37, 41. That's all looking good. Alright. So, they're connecting the tuck right now. Squawk 2000 is in here. Then let's give this a go before start checklist, please. Park and brake is set. Takeoff speeds and thrust. V1, 136. VR, 137. V2, 141. Flex, 48. Windows are closed and the bacon is on. Before start checklist complete. So, ground from flight deck. Go ahead. So, the pushback is approved. Park and brake set. Roger, then uh, pushing facing west, release brakes, please. Brakes released, off block at 4-0, and that's 5 minutes of delay on the uh, late loading and late load sheet. Roger that, start of the push, and you're clear to start the engines at your discretion. Roger. Roger. 
so once we're clear of the red line so basically now starting engines two and one in sequence engine two start Okay, we have a good start to engine 2, starting engine 1, and the push is complete, parking brake is set. So, engine number 1 start in progress, and while that's going on, quick look out here, and we can actually see that the airport scenery is really up to MK Studio standards here. I like that very much. Okay, engine start is in progress. And then we have two good starts. Clear to disconnect, show me the pin on the left and have a good day. Bye bye. So, zero trim remains. Okay, so flaps are coming out, everything is looking good. The only thing that's once again not working is the rudder pedals, for some reason they keep causing trouble here. Okay, so let's see. The ramp agent is here, holding the pin in the hands after start checklist. Anti-ice, engine anti-ice on. He can start us checked, pitch trim zero and the rudder trim is zero. After start checklist complete. Okay, clear left side and clear right side. Brake release, off we go. So, even at this weight, we can see the airplane taxis really, really nicely. Then our routing is going to lead us straight at, off to the right and around the corner. And I am going to show you that one on the ground chart over here. So, we are leaving from Doc Bravo down here, straight ahead. On to Echo, right turn on Alpha, and then full length Alpha 1 for runway 28. So, we do need a little bit of power to keep the airplane going. It will slow down rather easily, it seems. But that is not really surprising at a weight of 75 tons for an Airbus A320. So, Foxtrot is the first. We want to go on to Echo, which is the second to the right. Just over here. Okay, right on echo. Then let's slow down a little bit. Okay, flight control track. Full up. Full down. Neutral. Full left. Full right. Neutral. Rudder. 
Ooh, what's it doing here? I did press the pedal disconnect, didn't I? Huh. That seems a little buggy. Or perhaps Phoenix have changed the logic with the latest update? In either case, a little bit of rudder would definitely be fine. Okay, so off to the right, onto Alpha. Here we go. Hello, Emmanuel in the flight deck. The cabin is now secure for takeoff. Thank you. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll take the flight controls as granted the rudder. Probably just a change in the Phoenix logic that I that I once again missed since I have been flying a little bit over the last couple of days. Okay, spoilers are disarmed. Interesting. Could swear I did those. But anyway. So, no changes to the takeoff briefing. Weather is good, so let's go on to the terrain displays over here for our departure. And then let's continue with the taxi checklist. Flight controls, checked, flap setting, conf 2, radar and predictive wind shear, on and auto. And remote selector, norm, ECAM memo, takeoff, no blue. Taxi checklist, complete. So, note to myself, whenever I'm using the external camera, my rudder steering gets disabled. Okay, reaching Alpha 1. Now look at that, gliders in Zurich. I haven't seen that yet. Okay, runway to eight, line up and wait. Cabin crew, prepare for departure. So the default scenery has a couple of elevations issues when entering runway to eight. Let's see how that's gonna go in the MK Studio scenery. In the default, you do need quite a lot of thrust occasionally. Looks like we need a little bit over here. But overall the aircraft keeps rolling nicely. Very good. Alright, lineup checklist. Take off runway, 28, full length. TCAS, TARA, PAX 1 and 2. Off, lineup checklist complete. Alright, beautiful Rome textures, textures down here. High definition, good looking, nothing more you can possibly ask for. So, Hedel Wies 130 Juliet, drum me to 8, cleared for takeoff. Okay, are you ready? Takeoff. Man flex 48, that's that is wrong, may order thrust blue. Thrust set. One hundred knots. 
check. V1, rotate. Positive climb, gear up. Enough, check. Really awesome looking scenery around the airport here. Thrust climb, auto thrust. Pack one on. Pack to one. Now that is a wonderful engine sound, isn't it? Phoenix have once again done a great job on that. Okay, continue climb, flight level 110. Climb. Flaps 1, speed check. Flaps 1. Okay, speed limit 210 for the first turn. That means we'll have to keep the flaps extended. And if we want to do things precisely, the speed limit is actually all the way through the turn and thereafter it is cancelled. So, we'll keep the flaps out over here. But once we have flown the turn, then we can start to accelerate. So, passing 210 knots, you will see that the flaps are going to retract automatically, and only the slats will remain, bringing us from config 1 plus F into config 1. And here you see it. And that raises the speed limit a little bit there. Which is why I accelerated slightly past 210, in order to trigger that mechanism. Reduces a little bit of drag as well, so I think that's a win-win situation. The only downturn is a slightly higher pitch, which I really don't see as much of a problem. Okay, engine anti-ice off. Engine anti-ice coming off. Set standard. Standard cross check passing flight level 73. Now. Okay, beautiful. So the turn is almost complete. Love to hand fly the Phoenix. It just feels very, very good. And then, track 042 inbound to Cloton. That means we can start to roll out of the turn now. Here we go. So, delete the speed restriction, please. Invalid delete. No, it's not. You should be able to clear it right on the flight plan page. But well, then let's do it like this. Okay. Flaps zero, speed checked. Flaps zero. Looks like it redrew the route when I cleared the speed restriction. Of course, it shouldn't have done that. But well, 
we're hand flying anyway, so I'm not too worried about uh, doing some strange things like that. Flight director doing strange things here as well. Oh, give me director Momo, please. And that's probably looking a lot better. So the direct cost of Momol is 092. Let's go ahead and fly just that. Or 093 right now. Also good for me. Okay, direct Momol once more. And I think this is now superb. All right, autopilot one. Then we can do the 10,000 foot checks, release our guests. All right, clear and copy, please. So, cruising 350, optimum 330, maximum 364. Well, in that case, I suppose we are going to start in flight level 330 instead of 350. So Simreef might have been a little bit optimistic here. So let's put 330 into here, then step out 350 at the optimum point. Let's see what it's going to calculate where that is. So, we should get step time information up here now. Unfortunately, we don't. But I tell you what, let's go ahead and take a couple of directs here. Let's go to Xevix first. So, direct to insert, straight ahead towards Xevix. And then we have Climb Nav. All right, and up to flight level 330 for our first uh, cruising altitude. And that's flight level 330 blue. So we're clear of any terrain. Terrain display can come off. And then a quick check down in the flight plan to see where it's inserted the step climb. Interestingly enough, nowhere. No optimal step. I don't believe that. I really don't believe that. I think we are gonna do a step climb, but... Well, if the aircraft says so for now, then... Let's go ahead and see where this is gonna go. So I tend to say we're up in the air. This was a lovely departure. I had a lot of fun hand flying this one, and Zurich Airport has looked excellent as well. So, I see you all as we're getting a little bit closer towards Hogada.
let's start to prepare for our arrival into our destination airport. We're gonna start by looking at the latest weather conditions, which I am simply going to grab from the EFB up here. And the latest Hogada weather is currently 01010, Cavalcade 25 degrees, QNH 1018. So, pretty much like that. Alright, let's go down into the FMS and start our approach preparation. So, starting with the stars, let's check that everything we have in the box right now is actually accurate for our flight. So... We got our stars, and we're coming in via the Bopop 1 Alpha arrival, and that one starts, surprisingly, at Bopop. Above flight level 130, then we proceed via waypoint 611, above level 110, 612, above 9000, and 203, which is at 6100. From there we're going to join the Arnav approach to runway 34 right. And that one starts at 203, 6100, maximum 210 knots, on to waypoint 204, at 3000, max 185 knots. So that's going to be a rather steep descent that we're going to do over there. So we got to remember to actually get the drag devices out as early as possible. The approach itself starts at waypoint... Well, it starts to descend at 9.2 miles. And then we've got waypoint 205 at 6.1 nautical miles and 2,000 feet. Going down, we go to a minima of 290 feet, and in case of missed approach, straight at waypoint 206 above 1500, then we continue via 207 above 3000 towards waypoint 200 at 7,100 feet. So our flight plan is good. We don't need anything in the Ratnav page. We are going to enter our destination runway on the progress page and then on the cruise page. We can start with our weather and for that we have a QNH of 1018, temperature 25 and the winds at 010 at 10. So, the minimum comes from the chart, and as we mentioned already, that is 290 feet. Like that. And last but not least, let's go ahead and have a quick look at the runway itself. So, we have 4 kilometers of runway available, and the first usable exit is somewhere over here. That's easily 2.5 kilometers in. So, what are we going to do? Config 3 for the landing. And we'll leave the auto brakes off so that we keep the brakes as cool as possible. In terms of the MSA, anything 2300 in the region of our arrival will keep us safe. So engine out acceleration is going to be 2300 feet. We do carry 28 minutes of extra fuel and the secondary is going to become a copy of the active. Well, and with that, let's go ahead and start the approach briefing, please. Alright, so bulk up arrival for an RMP approach, runway 34 right, minimums 290 feet, and in case of Goran, straight at, then a right hand turn, climbing 7100. Extra fuel for 20 minutes. Sounds very, very good. So, the approach will be flown with final approach mode, eventually. On to um, raw data with the bird, land the config 3, stop margin more than enough, reversals idle, auto brakes off, plant from my exit to the right. I really don't see any hotspots for today's taxi in. Do you have any specials on monster nuts? No, nope, me neither. So, threats for the arrival. It might be rather hard to actually decelerate the aircraft, that's because of the warm temperatures and because of the steep descent path on our base lag. So we're going to prepare for that by getting the flaps out, getting the speed brake out, maybe even the landing gear if needed, on the base in order to manage those altitudes. You see any threats for the arrival? No? Perfect. So that's our briefing completed. 
Liebe Fluggäste aus dem Cockpit Ihr Kapitän, wir werden in Kürze unseren Sinkflug in Richtung Bulgara starten und haben noch eine Flugzeit von einer halben Stunde. Das Wetter aktuell 25 Grad bei klarem Himmel. Wir bedanken uns herzlich, dass Sie heute mit Edelwies geflogen sind, wünschen Ihnen eine schöne Aufenthalt und gegebenenfalls eine gute und sichere Weiterreise, einen schönen Urlaub und hoffen Sie bald wieder an Bord eines unserer Flugzeuge willkommen zu heißen. Vielen Dank. Ladies and gentlemen, from Flatek, this is your captain speaking. We will soon start our descent towards Wolgada with a remaining flight time of around 30 minutes. The weather, clear skies, temperature 25 degrees. We wish you unforgettable holidays and hope to see you all again on board of a future flight very soon. Thank you very much for your attention. All right, here we go. That's everything dealt with. Then let's go ahead and start our descent. And I see you all as we're getting a little bit closer to our destination airport. So we're reaching 10,000. Let's make sure the seatbelt sign gets turned on and then it's time to get that speed break out to start losing our energy. Remember though, we're sitting in an A320, so the aircraft will only give you half speed break as long as we're on autopilot, which is the reason why I am going to go manual flight once we turn into the base. For now, let's bleed off the speed, and once it is down, we will manually continue that descent down to um, 2000, which is the platform altitude. <coughs> okay, so down we go, set Q&H. Q&H 1018 cross check, passing 10,000 now. Checked. Alright, and with that, Let's do the 10,000 foot flow as well. So constraints is selected. We don't need LS since we are flying an ANAF approach today. Auto brakes are off. We do have GPS primary with a high accuracy <coughs> and an RMP of 0 0.3 for the ANAF approach. Perfect. So all of that out of the way. Let's go ahead and do the approach checklist, please. Hello, Emmanuel in the machine room. The cabin is now secure for landing. Thank you very much. Okay, so far so good. Then approach checklist, please. Barrel reference, Q&H 1018. Seatbelt on, minimum, barrel 290. Auto brake off, engine mode selector, norm, approach checklist complete. Alright, we're now 500 feet above the profile. We should catch that by the time we reach the deceleration point. And then we will need to do a little bit of manual management here. Since the Airbus, if a speed constraint is below the um, green dot speed, is just automatically going to activate the approach phase and then decelerate to the green dot speed. And if the flaps are extended all the way down to the uh, next characteristic speed. Also a quick look out here and really wondering where all those trees are coming from. I can assure you there are no such trees anywhere in Hogada. Right, flaps one. Speed checked. Nope, there definitely shouldn't be any trees quite like this. Alright, so let's go back inside. Okay, kindly sequence your waypoint so that we can descend to, down to the next lower altitude. Here we go, 3000 magenta, and we will maintain the S speed during that descent. Now we are at that point where the challenge is to get down, so let's go ahead and turn off the autopilot here so that we get full speed brakes. So, quick check on the flight control page. And indeed, the rate of descent has increased just that tiny bit, which is fair enough for me. Looks like we are able to maintain that rate of descent just about nicely. The 185 knot restriction down here is complied with. Well, six knots, let's not worry about those. So, we are actually doing all right. Then, as soon as we are past Golf November 204, we can go ahead and activate the approach phase.
Oh, those trees over here are looking weird. There are not... The AI is messing that up. It sees the dark rocks and then puts trees on them. Definitely not supposed to do that. Okay, so speed brakes going in. And then 2000 blue. Which is interesting, seeing that it hasn't sequenced the waypoint 204 yet. It should still show us 3000 magenta. But okay, let. Well, that. It was there for a moment. Okay, here we go. Approach armed, and we have UPNAV final blue. So, flaps 2. Speed checked. Flaps 2. Checked. And we have speed final approach. Alright, gear down. Go around altitude 7100 feet set. Okay, manual thrust. And we should have turned that one on a little bit earlier already. Flaps 3. Landing checklist. Ica memo. Landing no blue. Landing checklist complete. So, this is looking quite good. A little bit of power to get the speed stable. Getting a tad low on the profile right now. You should pass waypoint 205 at 2000. That's looking better. Now this is, look, this is an interesting view, isn't it? <laughs> Alright, let's keep flying the aircraft, though. We can see the puppy already, we got two whites, two reds. Then flood wrecked us off, bird on. The wind is changing around a little bit right now, so it is fine that we have the thrust on idle temporarily while going through the gate. So, Poppy 3 red, correcting. And here we are, back on the poppy. Continue. Speed checked, correcting. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Retard. Five. 
Oh, overflowed a bit. Here we go. Spoiler, reverse green, diesel. Manual brakes. Seventy knots. Well, my friends, and with that, welcome to Hulgada. <coughs> Gonna vacate that runway to the right. Start a timer for our single engine taxi, should we desire to do so. But at first, let's go ahead and vacate that runway. And then we're going to taxi over to the right hand side to the terminal over there. So we're clear on the left side and we are clear on the right side. Onto the main taxiway and a little bit of thrust to be sure to get it moving. The brakes should be nice and cool. We did use them from about 100 knots onwards. A lot of energy has dissipated by that time. So then, after landing procedures. Nice and cool, 26 degrees. For Egypt that is cool. After landing checklist, radar and predictive wind shear off, after landing checklist complete. So starting the APU, and we're clear on the right hand side, our gate is waiting over here. So this is going to be number 63, actually 64. My mistake. You don't need to follow me for that. Lights off. And here we go. So, is there any martial law or anything that looks important? Not really, huh? Well, I think the docking system in the middle is working, so that's gonna do the job. And stop. Okay, park brake set. Cabin crew, all doors and park. And here we go. So the engines are running down. Let's give them a tiny bit of time here. In the meantime, you go to standby. Fuel is looking good. Equal usage. Okay, parking checklist, park and brake our trucks, that's the brake set, engines, off, wing light, off, fuel pumps, off, parking checklist complete. Cockpit from ground, go ahead. So, the external power is connected and the trucks are in place, you can release the brakes. 
Thank you. Brakes released. All right, my friend. And that's it. Welcome to Hogada. I hope you all had a wonderful, lovely flight with us. And I hope you are going to enjoy your holidays in 26 degrees, warm Egypt. And I'm really looking forward to see you all again on the flight back home in the future. In the meantime though, thank you very much for watching. As always, I hope you loved the video as much as I loved flying it and creating it for you. Be sure to like, comment and subscribe. And if you really love what I'm doing on this channel, I would appreciate a small donation through the Buy Me Coffee link in the video description below. Thank you for watching and see you all again on the next one.